Yo, 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 yo. It's our lifestyle podcast, also known as OLP for short. If you're checking us out on YouTube, thank you very much. If you're listening via a podcast app, we thank you as well. This is episode 354. We're going to do something a little bit different here. And on this episode, we're basically going to celebrate Rad Day, which is March 21st. We'll talk a little bit about that. And we're going to uh, dive back into the catalog here at OLP all the way back uh, to some earlier episodes and highlight episode 102, which was Devin from Rad Racing Movie Cars, and also episode 160, which was Bill Allen, which Bill Allen starred in the film Rad. He also played in uh, TV shows like um, uh, several shows that I talk about with him. One of those is Family Ties. That's what I was trying to think of with Michael J. Fox. So uh, stick with us. Although I know a lot of you are, are probably saying, hey, maybe I listened to those. But they were very long time ago. But I also think that we're going to pick up some people that um, are newer listeners. Maybe they're going to come here for the first time because of this episode. So please stick with us to the end if you can. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, you heard at the top, we want to thank our title sponsor, Scrape in the Coast. Their event, I believe this is the 21st annual, and it's every June this year. It's June 21st through the 23rd of 2024. And, of course, Scrape in the Coast is held in Biloxi at the Coliseum. So about 100 days or so away, believe it or not. And then three months after that, almost to the day uh, in September, we're going to be at, of course, the freaking weekend, which is also in Biloxi, an amazing show. And we cannot wait for those two events. Now, uh, many of you are probably scratching your head going, what is Rad Day? Well, it's simple. Rad, the film, the cult classic, it was released on March 21st of 1986. So it was filmed. I don't have the exact film dates, but basically in 85, possibly early into 86. But I would sure, I, 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 I actually, I think they did... Now that I think about it, I think I have an image from a rap party, and I want to say that was towards the end of 85. I have to look back at that. There's a guy that saved some of the stuff from after they, they finish or wrap up their uh, principal photography. You basically have, you know, on these film productions, they have a rap party, a WRAP, and someone had saved some of those images uh, or some of those items, rather, and he had posted. And I forget the day uh, of the rap party. I want to say it was in October, but I could be wrong on that uh, because someone shared the other day and they did a collab post with Rad, uh, the Rad movie, the official Instagram. And there were uh, photos of Hell Track, which is the track that's raced in the film. And it was showing snow on the ground. So, uh, you know, maybe that did possibly go into early 86. We'll have to find out. I'll have to do some digging there. But basically, Rad, to me, has seemed to really build some steam over the years. I think everybody that watched the film as a child, you know, we all, it was beloved to us. The challenge was after it was released on VHS for rental only, from what I've been told, I don't think it was ever technically available to buy. Of course, you know, people would get their hands on them. And, you know, the VHS is pretty rare these days. But bottom line is the Rad film, unfortunately, was not available to consume or purchase officially until just a couple of years ago, which was just totally insane. And I believe Talia Shire, who's in the film, she was in Rocky as well, You'll see her name associated with it. I think it was her maybe production company. And, you know, there were all kinds of rumors, you know, people that said, hey, she just was kind of over it. She didn't think it was that great. You know, it was just like, you know, B flick from the 80s, you know, no big deal. But I believe I've read some people could maybe chime in on social media. I believe that I've read that maybe the son or someone down the lineage there in the family you know, has recognized the cultural significance of it, especially if you think about how much the old school BMX movement over the past, I'll call it 20, 25 years, many of us have kind of seen it maybe grow over the past 10 or 15-ish. But, you know, certainly there were collectors and there were people fully engaged in, you know, everything old school BMX. You know, I would say it never stopped for them. 
but I know that it's really grown over the past 10 or 15 years. And uh, thankfully, the family or the people within that organization have recognized that. Of course, Rad is now out on, for instance, Apple Movies or Apple Forever. We call it iTunes. It's hard not to call it that. But you can go in there and you can purchase it digitally. It's also available like basically in like a 4K restoration. So it's pretty cool. There's been a couple of releases over the course of time, uh, Vinegar Syndrome, and there's a couple of rare versions of it that have come out like with the tins and the different artwork and stuff. But for the most part, last time I checked, I think you can go out there and purchase even a physical copy, although I would say the majority of you that are listening are probably going to end up consuming it do a digital means if you want to check it out. Maybe you've never seen it. I do believe also the last time I was in either HBO, which I think is HBO Max now, or Showtime, it was one of the two. It was on that platform for a very long time, so it may still also be there. If you have access to one of those, you can check it and you you can watch it there. So, again, we're going to dive back in just in a little bit uh, to episode 102. We had Devin on from Rad um, Racing Movie Cars. Now, he owns the Blazer, uh, a replica, a tribute, if you will, not the actual VIN number from the film. We don't know what happened to it, but he owns a Blazer that was recreated to, you know, the Christian Hollings uh, red Blazer from the film. And then, of course, like I said, Bill Allen, we'll talk with him. Uh, it's also good for me, I think, sometimes to reprise some of these older interviews because as we, as I've said earlier, as we pick up new listeners, you know, not everyone has the time to go back on maybe Podbean and start searching or I might say, hey, yeah, we had Bill Allen on. I think when I looked back, I called that uh, episode rad, which, you know, it, it's tough to maybe find, right? So you're searching our lifestyle podcast rad or Bill Allen and it doesn't always pop up. So that's another reason why I'm trying to kind of reprise some of these audio interviews because I put a lot of time and effort into it. it means a lot to me. And again, some of you may not have been able to consume it in the past. Now you can. Now, I went to see Rad not originally in 86. Uh, the story goes in when I was a young and so I was born in 78. Papa Smurf had a friend at work and this guy had a big satellite. So you think back to the 80s, what's more 80s, late 70s, early 80s than having like your own satellite dish, the big one. And he would record films, I guess. I don't know if he would rent them sometimes and then have two VCRs or he most of his stuff was probably just from satellite. He would VHS and say, hey, Mark, here's a here's a movie. And my dad brought home the VHS with Rad on it. And I was forever changed. I mean, definitely, I would say it changed my life because I loved that film. And when I went to the Hell Track 2018 event in Midlow, Texas, what was super cool is I think it was Bill that he hinted, you know, in this little kind of Q&A type session they had, they kind of talked over the film. Uh, the film, I think audio was down and, you know, these guys were were kind of given a voiceover. You know, he mentioned that a lot of kids, I forget, he maybe said like in that, 8 to 12 or 8 to 14 or 8 to 13 uh, uh, age range, which I was, it really had an impact on us because we were just in that great era of our lives. You know, me being born in 78, let's say mid to late 86, I see the film, you know, it, it just was awesome. And BMX stuff was so big then. I read the magazines I could get my hands on through the grocery stores and Loved BMX, loved my Mongoose. Now I had a crappy Huffy, which was a hand-me-down, my original bike that came from a neighbor, I think, or a dad, uh, one of Papa Smurf's friends at at work. He had a friend that I think had three older sons, so I got a lot of hand-me-down stuff from them. And then my Mongoose, I don't even remember where it came from. I want to say it was a Christmas Santa gift, and maybe it came from a, a local bike store, Papa Smurf and my mom may have bought it. I forget. And unfortunately, I've even looked. I don't have a lot of photos of me on the bike as a kid, but I was on that bike all the time. And my dad had a 35 millimeter uh, camera, so we have tons of photos. We might even have some video of me riding at the local track, which I was not good. 
but I remember there was a period of time where my dad's 35 millimeter camera got uh, damaged or something. So there was kind of a period where we don't have as many photos, like family photos. But anyways, going down that buddy trail. So basically now you fast forward and you go, okay, the film is now re-releasing in theaters. It did the, They did this a year or two ago. I want to say a couple years ago, and it was the first time I saw it on the big screen. Many of you are going to be going to see the film maybe for the first time on the big screen on 321. So I say all of that because I think 321 has built some steam because, number one, it's been re-released on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, whatever you want to call it, all of that, physical media. It's been released digitally, of course, through iTunes or Apple. And then, of course, they're smart enough to know, hey, let's put it in the movie theater. So I don't think 321 was always celebrated by the masses. I think some of the hardcore fans always knew, hey, that date. But I think now, again, that's it's kind of where we are now. So we'll dive into that. I'm probably not going to talk too much more about the rad movie other than the the, the two interviews that you'll hear. The other update that I have related to it, I guess my last update, I think, is I have been working on a Christian Hollings tribute bike. So I have my Crew Drones tribute. I've had that. And I had picked up several years ago a Mongoose Mini Goose. Got a decent deal on it. wasn't super cheap, but it, it had some good parts on it. I mean, it was a real nice bike. And I always intended to either make it a Christian Hollings bike, which is Lori Laughlin's character in the film that drives the Red Blazer. Uh, basically the girlfriend, if you will, of Crew. So hers is kind of that red version where Crew's is more of the blue and the yellow and red. Uh, so, uh, you know, when I went to the Hell Truck event years ago, it was like, you know, some of the guys would have all three. They'd have the Crew Jones bike, the Christian Hollings bike, and the Bart Taylor bike. Uh, you can see some of my, if you're watching on YouTube, some of the rad stuff over here I've collected over the course of time. But you know, now I'm down to, I got one left because I've kind of wrapped up the Christian Hollings bike. There's a few details I really want to dial in, like the number plate. It's a repop number plate, but of course I need to do the decals and things like that on it. So I'm going to work through that. I think that's it for rad until we get to the interviews a little bit later. I want to give again, a huge shout out to the freaking weekend. Uh, look them up on Instagram. We are going to be out there in September It's literally three months after Scraping the Coast. So, again, Scraping is 621 through 623. You fast forward 90 days, give or take, and then, boom, you're at the freaking weekend, that third weekend in Biloxi. So, I know Tripp is super excited about it. You can follow the freaking weekend on Instagram. Uh, He's doing some great uh, social media posts. We saw him, of course, at Lone Star. He had the big, huge hat on, which I saw on Shark Tank. Uh, good dude, and we want to go out there and support him. So we'll be out there after scraping the coast. The episode overview, which was a long overview, is brought to you by our family at Hammered Weekend, where we tell you time and time again, if you want to show some love to one of our longtime supporters, uh, visit hammeredweekendwear.com. That's H-A-M-M-E-R-D, weekendwear.com. Now, the old site would bring you to Hammered Apparel. So if you have that saved as a favorite, you need to update it to Hammered Weekend Wear. And when you go out there, you're going to see they have the Kicking It in Kentucky Splash event. Uh, This is a pre-sale. So uh, Mini Truck and Magazine is basically doing a Kicking It old school or kicking it, excuse me, kicking it at Kentucky Splash. So I don't want to get it confused with the Pacific Northwest event. Uh, but Tony Moore at Asphalt Army did this artwork, which is super cool. They've got that pre-sale going on. They also have some new hats. Don't forget they recently uh, dropped their new white Nissan hard body king cap and their Izuzu pup follow the drip. So They've got some cool stuff. They also have access you can pay with Apple Pay now, so that's pretty cool. They've got the Limelight stuff, different sticker packs, you name it, Hammered with a D, H-A-M-M-E-R-D, WeCanWear.com. Okay, uh, next we got breaking news. So this breaking news is more along the lines of my breaking news, and uh, Dr. Dre uh, received a star on the Walk of Fame on Tuesday March 19th, so one day ago from the the time of this recording, and that was super cool. 
Uh, Snoop was there. I watched some of it via YouTube, and Snoop kind of did a little written freestyle type uh, track, uh, you know, a poem, uh, if you will, was kind of cool that he did for Dre. Uh, Eminem was there, 50 Cent, uh, DJ Battle Cat. I saw Fred Wreck. There were a ton of people, DJ Quick. So that was super cool. And then also, if you want to check out Snoop, 50 Cent, a.k.a. Curtis Jackson, and Dre were also all on Jimmy Kimmel Live, which was awesome. So I watched that and I uh, watched that on YouTube. So pretty cool. Dre drops some some news about Eminem's new album. He also talks about the new Snoop album, which is supposed to be called Missionary. We knew that. That's kind of the opposite of Doggy Style, right? Doggy Style came out on 1123 of 93. And we had heard this buildup that they were going to release this album for the 30th anniversary of Doggy Style. That, of course, has come and gone last November. And some of the forums I go in, there's like this big long thread about, is it ever going to come out? And we don't know. Dre said yes. Uh, Snoop says that Dre's going to be mixing the album in April. If you know Dre... He's so successful at this point that a lot of times they produce so much music and it never makes the light of day. You know, artists have come and gone. It's a whole, I don't know, epidemic. And I could do a whole episode on it. But uh, bottom line is, check it out. The breaking news brought to you by our family at AccuAir. If you want to uh, add the plug-and-play air, sus- air suspension management to your vehicle, Look no further than AccuAir. It's A-C-C-U-Air.com. That's AccuAir. Follow them on social media. They are good people. They support the scene. The general updates. So this is the only general update that I have for you. We're getting ready for Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, also known for short as Mini Nats. Now, Mini Nats is that third weekend in April. Many of you know about it. I'm going to try to put together a photo of people from different states. I mean, I've already in my head kind of calculated there's going to be people from all over. I believe we've confirmed there's people from Canada for sure. I don't know what other countries, but I can tell you there's going to be well over 25 states going from what I know represented there. So that is super cool. I know Jason Bell and team are getting super excited What I would tell you to do is have your plan ready. Uh, Number one, if you have a ticket, put it in the glove box of the vehicle that you're going to be bringing. That way you don't get halfway there or to the show and say, damn, I forgot my ticket. We don't want you. We don't want that to happen to you. Number two, figure out if you're going to buy merchandise. Many of you are from Jason Bell and from the official Mini Nats tent. Uh, Make sure you kind of, you know, some of you are going to float in early. Have your plan. You know, maybe the missus is going to go stand in line and do what you need to do because those lines get super long on Friday and Saturday. So try to think ahead and get in line early to get your merch if you can. The general updates is brought to you by our kinfolk at Lone Star Throwdown, one of our top shows, and I've argued one of the biggest and baddest truck shows in the country. It's Lone Star Throwdown. You can go to LoneStarThrowdown.com for more information. Of course, they um, I provided tons of updates on the last episode, kind of getting past the challenges that they were faced with. But of course, like any good organization, when they face adversity, they move forward. And again, we would expect it to be kind of in that third to last weekend for 2025. Can't believe I'm saying that. This year, of course, it was February uh, 23rd through the 25th. So probably going to fall that same exact weekend next year in 2025. So more to come as we get closer. And, of course, that pre-reg is going to open. I believe it's always on August 1st. So we want to keep you uh, informed of that. Shout out to our, our kinfolk at Lone Star Throwdown. The trivia with Mike. So are you ready, Mike? Now, I know some of you are asking where the hell is Mike. Mike is, we've both been kind of busy. That's why, again, although I'm working on a few other interviews with spring break, um, March is tough for me. My wife's, uh, we, we have our anniversary, but we also have my wife's born day, which is technically today. Yes, I'm recording this the day of my wife's born day. So happy born day to my wife, Maddie B. And uh, Mike is obviously doing the dang thing. He's leaving for Orange Beach Invasion, which we'll hit upon. So 
here's my question, which we knew Mike wasn't going to get this. Some of you might appreciate it because this is a rad tribute episode. So the last episode I think was pretty easy uh, with the trivia. This is my question. What bike does Crew Jones ride? So what bike does Crew Jones ride in the movie Rad during the Hell Track event? So what bike does Crew Jones ride in the movie Rad at the Hell Track event? So some of you are scratching your head going, yo, I've never seen this fo- this this film. So many people know the Crew Jones bike to be kind of a mongoose, right? The loop tail, the Californian. However, the bike that he rides or, or the bike that's ridden in the race itself is a Murray X20C. Now, that is, um, you know, most people when we build these tribute bikes, you know, we're all building the mongoose. The Murray, there's one person out there that has like a new old stock one that has the hanging tags and all that stuff. And there's some photos out there on that X20C. But I believe, and maybe there's a couple quick shots in the film when they're on a mongoose in the Hell Track race, but I believe the majority of it is the Murray. Uh, the Murray can also be seen earlier in the film at the 7-Eleven, which is the win this bike. I always thought it was ironic because Mongoose had that primary advertising in the entire film, and then he's on a Murray for the race. Many of us, of course, as a kid, I didn't know that. But um, I always thought that was unique, kind of a, a fun trivia about the movie Rad. The trivia with Mike is brought to you by our kinfolk at Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, also known as Mini Nats. Again, we'll see you out there very soon, and we cannot wait. Uh, If you don't have a golden ticket, so to speak, fear not. Head out to the show anyways. They've got free cruising. You can get a wristband uh, as a spectator. There's going to be trucks from all over the country, some of the biggest and baddest trucks ever built. You're not going to want to miss it. Southeast, Mini Truck and Nationals, also known as Mini Nats. Okay, the scene updates which now includes show updates. So here's what we got going on. Uh, this one's going to be short and sweet for this week. Uh, the There's four shows this weekend, if you can believe it. There's Altered Metal. There's Terminal Takeover, which we talked to Glenn not too long about, uh, not too long ago. There's Orange Beach Invasion, which Mike is gallivanting to with Shannon. And then there's also Forbidden Fantasy, which is back at the Avi in uh, out west, if you will, in, in Nevada. So... Uh, congratulations to all these shows. We certainly hope that uh, you guys have uh, a fantastic weekend. Hopefully there's going to be great weather and whatnot. On the next episode, we'll look a little bit further into the month of April because we're going to be already in April. And uh, just know, like I've said in the past, uh, not all of us can make every show. Of course, I certainly love talking about the shows, even some of the history of the shows and things like that. But uh, just know, you know, even this year, I'm kind of slowing down a little bit. Sure, I'm going to be at, you know, the Lone Stars, the Mini Nats, the Scraping the Coasts, uh, f- the freaking weekend. You know, some of those events I, I, I don't want to miss if I can. But, uh, you know, just know I'm starting to slow down a little bit, and it's just because I'm working on things here at the home. So we certainly understand, but we want to share with you all the events that are going down because whether you're there or maybe you're going to follow some of the stuff on social media to see some of the killer rides that are out there. The scene updates is brought to you by our family at Garage Gear Clothing. Don't forget to hit up garagegearclothing.com. They have free shipping items on a certain amount. I think it's $100 or more, but you can also hit them up at shows like Mini Nats. They have amazing artwork that's done by Graphic Disorder on their shirts. They got hats. They got stuff for kids, females, you name it. Good people. GarageGearClothing.com. Hut 1, Hut 2, Hut 3, Hut. Old Dirty Ballard, live and uncut. So this week, all I want to say, or this episode rather, is um, make sure you please subscribe to YouTube. If you want to leave like a super thanks there, you want to become a member. I forget if it's, uh, I think um, the subscription's free. If you want to become a member, there's going to be some perks that are already there. Some of the videos that I upload, you'll get um, access to them early, and uh, there will be other things that are going to be coming. If you guys have questions about the magazine and things like that, you'll be able to submit those questions. And if you are a member on YouTube, I will uh, 
be answering questions and things like that. So much more to come. I really want to make YouTube the platform where everything kind of resides, whether it be these older flip throughs, these episodes, these interviews, the shorter videos, you name it, it's all going to be out there. I want to say uh, thanks to those that have subscribed to my sub stack. You can subscribe for free. Uh, if you just Google ODB's life, that's going to hopefully land you on my sub stack. I'm going to be talking a lot more there, kind of breaking down the magazine in ways that's maybe not as easy to do in a video. So check me out on Substack. I will be writing a lot more. I, of course, recently wrote about Lone Star Throwdown and these street takeovers. So you can check out some of my words there. ODB Live and Uncut brought to you by our kinfolk at Colorado Custom Wheels. Thank you to Michael and team for all the continued support. They often show us a lot of love, and I will tell you this, hands down, best customer service, and I would argue the best billet wheels in the industry, coloradocustom.com. If you're looking to do an old school kind of tribute build, they will reproduce older wheels. Uh, if you find something in a catalog, uh, email them. You can go to their website, shoot them an email. Michael and team will take care of you. That includes steering wheels, and I think they do a few other things as well, so... If you have something in your mind that you need or want, hit up Colorado Custom Wheels. Okay, uh, next we got the Mini Truck and Syndicate updates, recently kind of rebranded from Airhead Nation. And I will say this, this goes out to everyone that's a listener or anybody really that consumes this. Keep pushing on your projects, you know, um, you know your ambitions, where you want to be in life, whether it's moving up career-wise, you know, buying a house, moving into a bigger house, buying more stuff, getting a new car, whatever it be, you know, we're all kind of into different stuff, and I would highly encourage you, keep pushing. You re will realize, many of us realize that this stuff doesn't happen overnight. I'm certainly thankful for what I have, and... Um, I just know that there's a lot of good people out there. And I know sometimes people, we all look in social media and we see, you know, other people maybe, you know, we think they're doing better than us or, wow, it must be nice or they have this and I have only this. You know, remember, social media is a lot of people posting things that we want to post. You know, it's not us posting, hey, I had a bad day. Uh, it's not me posting, man, look, I got another bill in the mail. I got to take care of, right, or another issue or another problem. Believe me, there's been some things that have creeped up, even on my side, that I don't want to have to deal with, but I have to. So, uh, again, I'm not going out on social media going, oh, look at this problem I have to deal with. So keep that in mind when you're looking at social media. You know, everybody's posting the fun stuff, the cool stuff. Not all of us are posting stuff that's like, oh, look, I had a bad day. So keep that in mind. Keep your heads up. Mini Truck and Syndicate updates brought to you by our kinfolk at Local Rides with a Z. That's L-O-C-A-L, Rides, R-I-D-E-Z, mag.com. Hit them up. You can buy issues as cheap as about 8 to $10. They're good people, Local Rides, mag. Uh, the podcast updates, uh, if you can, leave us a rating. However you're listening to this, if you're on YouTube, please uh, like, uh, comment, even if you want to put an emoji and uh, share it if you can. We really appreciate it. The Twin States Mazda artwork, we submitted that to Graphic Disorder. So uh, we're just waiting to pay the final invoice once that's submitted over. And many of you use the Mini Nats 3.0. So Mini Nats 30 code. And that means that you'll be picking it up at the event or someone you know will be picking it up. Hopefully, by the time you hear this, we'll have the website refreshed, and then you'll be able to place an order if you would like. And you can use Mini Nats 30 if you want to pick up the order at the show. That will help you uh, basically avoid shipping. And shipping is not cheap. Uh, you know, you could save seven, eight bucks on a shirt uh, if you do it that way, and that helps maybe put it towards a hat or something else that you want. The podcast updates is brought to you by all of our awesome sponsors. And I also want to give a shout out to Devious Customs. Jeff, he recently came on not too long ago, last November, and he talked a little bit about his struggle with um, maybe drinking a little bit too much, right? And I also talked about my struggle and where I'm at. I'm now uh, 12, I don't know, th uh, 15 months or so alcohol-free, and I feel better than I've ever had. So a uh, huge shout out to Jeff at Devious Customs. Good kinfolk. 
Uh, closing words, I just want to thank all of our uh, sponsors, as I mentioned a moment ago, including Scraping the Coast, our title sponsor. They're some of the best kinfolk out there. Uh, there's going to be so much more to come. I know, you know, the last couple episodes were Lone Star Throwdown. There was a lot going on there. You know, this one is kind of dedicated to something that I really love, which is the movie Rad. Uh, and uh, we do have the list that I keep plugging away on. I've got some cool interviews coming up, some guys that haven't been on podcasts before, but they have great stories to tell. So keep it locked to OLP, your mini truck and headquarters. We really appreciate all of you and stay on the rise. Everyone be safe. And remember, it's the first day of spring. Get outside and have fun. ODB, we out here. Peace. Yo, 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 it's our lifestyle, the podcast. And you're rocking with episode 102, Stay in Rad. You guys know I love Rad Movie. I was at the Hell Track event earlier this year. Damn, it feels like a lifetime ago. And I met a good dude out there by the name of Devin. So we're going to get all into it and who he is. But first, I'd like to welcome Devin. How you doing, man? Good, Jason. How are you? Thanks for inviting us to your show. Hey, anytime. It's our pleasure. And uh, I'm glad to hear that everything's going well. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about, man. But when I met you at the RAD event, you know, I saw this nice little motorhome set up and I saw all these cool bikes. And I'm like, dude, man, it's not every day that someone builds not only a Crew Jones bike, but the Christian Hollins bike. And then I had seen some teasers uh, leading up to the event about, you know, the Christian Hollins blazer was going to be there and whatnot. Tell us a little bit about how, uh, you know, we'll start with the rad event. Like how did that whole idea and concept and maybe the bike building come about? So interesting. Yeah. The, 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 the hell track event in Texas was, was totally rad. It really was. And I'm so glad that we got to go to that show. There was a lot of uh, work that went in to get us there. Um, you know, with the blazer and the bikes, uh, we, we were involved in, in some racing. My, my son is now 12, Braden. He's the other owner of the cars. Uh, we've been racing for a long time. And with work, uh, the schedules kind of changed, and we weren't able to make it to a lot of the races. Uh -huh. So we were kind of sitting at home idle, and we really needed a project. Well, a good friend of mine, Martin, from Martin Movie Cars, uh, he also belongs to Star Cars, um, Star Cars International out here in California, he uh, said, hey, well, why don't you get into the movie car thing, you know? And I, and I thought, well, wow, yeah, that sounds great. And he says, what's your favorite movie? What would you build a car after? And I said, well, I would do it out of rad. You know, the, I raced BMX back in the day. And, um, you know, I, I I would do it that way. So so he helped me. Um, we looked for a vehicle. We, we went all the way to Seattle from Southern California, man. We went all the way to Seattle for our really? first car. And the deal fell through. It took us about two days, two and a half days to finally meet up with the fellow, the, the owner of a vehicle. And it fell through, man. And, and we ended up finding another vehicle in Northern California. And we purchased that vehicle. And that's the vehicle we have now. So we do have a tribute vehicle. The, the reality for everybody is we don't know and nobody knows what happened to the real vehicles used in the movie Rad. All the vehicles in the parade scene, other than the Suburban from Mongoose. Uh, that was a real vehicle as well as GT and some of the team vehicles. But the fictitious character vehicles that you saw, the yellow Camaro, the Blazer, or the red Christian Hollings Blazer, and the Corvette, they were all fictitious. They were all on loan. And we don't know what happened to those vehicles. And, and I worked with some of the guys that were in the movie, Eddie Fiola, Martin Aparijo, Bill Allen. I asked them, I said, where, where can you guys point me in the direction? And these fellas, you know, they, we, we all ran kind of into a, a dead end with that. Sure. So we took the vehicle that we had. We restored the vehicle as best we could. We looked at every aspect of it and tried to make it as screen accurate as possible. And I think we did a pretty good job. We uh, unveiled it in Huntington Beach uh, to the fellas, uh, Martin, uh, Martin Aparijo, Eddie Fiola, Bill Allen, uh, the HB Tuesday BMX guys that were down in Huntington Beach. They ride every Tuesday down there at the pier. Uh, they and you know we told them we would bring the, the truck down and unveil it to them first because if it wasn't right I didn't want to take it out the rest of the way mm -hmm. unveiled it to them it was um, a, a great beginning of a new relationship with with the fellas uh, since then they've all you know had a chance to sign the BMX bikes let alone you know so touching on that we had to build bikes that went with the blazer because in the scenes you know you see the Christian Hollings bike and the crew Jones bike um, 
So coming from that BMX era in the 80s when I raced, I was pretty familiar with what this, the parts that I needed and such. And so, man, a lot of, lot of painstaking nights. We built the bikes. Uh, we built the Crew Jones Mongo- uh, the Crew Jones Mongoose as well as the Christian Hollings bike. The Christian Hollings bike had to look brand new. So the chrome had to be pristine. All the parts had to be fairly new. It really had to look like a factory ride. And the Crew Jones bike, I left it a little bit rough, a little bit raw. It really looks like a neighborhood kid rides the bike, and we kind of left it that way. Um, the fellas were real nice. They all rode the bikes, checked them out. They signed the bikes for me. That really put some um, um, some value to that for me and made me feel like we really had something going to represent the rad uh, BMXers from the movie as well as all the fans. And then uh, we went ahead and just worked hard, put the truck together. It took me four months to get the Blazer finished uh, when we unveiled it finally to the fellas. Uh, they were all very happy, I, sh- I guess would be one of the words I could use. And they, they've signed the Blazer since. And um, uh, so we got involved with Star Cars. So carrying over from that, mm-hmm. we, we got involved with Star Cars International out of L.A., and we go to a lot of these charity events. We take this vehicle alongside Dukes of Hazard, Smokey and the Bandit, um, Time Machine, uh, Movies 1, 2, and 3, uh, Christine. We see a lot of other movie cars that belong to our club, A-Team. And we, we go to these shows with a bunch of mixed characters and represent. What I found out was very quickly where there were some diehard people who hadn't seen rad in a long time (laughs) and when we come riding in with the blazer with the bikes riding high on the roof man i gotta tell you these people were excited to see that we were there representing their movie that they loved and you know it was a vhs tape back in the day and people would play it over and over and over again until their pictures were squiggly and maybe not (laughs) the best you know not the best picture anymore but the fact is we were there we added a stereo with outside speakers to the truck so that not only are you looking at a static display, but you're hearing the music from the soundtrack. You're really starting to feel it. You could touch it. It's there. The bikes are up there. You're like, wow, man, this really takes me back to when I was a kid or I was younger during that time that that movie was made. And um, so the relationship got uh, a lot better with Bill, Eddie, and Martin. Uh, I have met a few um, uh, uh, Peterson who wrote for Skyway, who represented the movie. He was like on Merv Griffin selling rad when it was coming out and doing his bike tricks on national TV. Um, Kevin Hall from Seattle rode for GT, you know, the sheepdog. He's uh, signed the truck as well. Jose Giannis, who you see in the big screen doing the backflip in that movie. He's been generous enough. Um, uh, Stu Thompson uh, signed up in there. Uh, we've got uh, man, I, I'm just trying to remember of all the fellas that that have signed in. Woody Itzen, uh, man, forgive me if I've yeah. forgotten some of them. Just right on the spot, Bart Connor, Bart yes. Taylor in the movie. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, yes, he's an Olympic gymnast and he was a gold medalist and 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 man, phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. But to be in the movie, we uh, met up with him in texas right jason you were there oh yeah and uh you know i'm sure you had a chance to meet him as well very very nice uh nice guy and he was generous enough to uh, add his signature to not only uh, the blazer uh, but to the corvette as well and and uh, you know we we built the blazer and started taking it to star car events to many charity events Uh we've had it now for a total of twice in the hollywood christmas parade and we just did the hollywood christmas parade this last Sunday, and we were, it was pretty cool. We had this year, we, uh, last year, sorry, last year, we had Martin Aparico come out, and Martin and a few other fellas uh, came out and rode along with us, alongside with all the star cars, and Martin was uh, surfing on his bike and doing <laughs> some tricks with the crowds, just like you saw yes. back in the movie, back in the eight, in 86, where 80, when the movie came out. You know, Martin and Eddie were doing tricks outside of the blazer in the parade scene. Well, we simulated that a little bit with Martin doing tricks on the ground outside of the truck or so the blazer. Awesome. Sorry, while while we're on the Holly on the on the Hollywood Strip. So that was that was great. It was a lot of fun. This year, just the other night, we were able to put Bill Allen uh, in the crew jersey and his wife um, in the in the uh, Christian Hollings outfit, and we put them both in the front seat and let them drive. The Christmas parade this year with our store car group 
and um, playing the outside music and driving down the boulevard and, and razzing up the fans. It was pretty cool. I think it was kind of unexpected for some people to see that, but um, that was a lot of fun. We, we, we met a lot of people along the way. We met one family for, that, was, that was eating in a restaurant uh, right adjacent to where we were putting the truck together before the parade, and they came down. They saw the they saw the blazer, they saw the bikes, and they're like, "That's from Rad. What is that doing on the on the <laughs> yeah. street of They had just flown in from Iowa. They were from a small town in Iowa, and they had just gotten here to L.A. on vacation. And unknown, you know, the Hollywood parade was going on, and unknown, they would find the Rad blazer there. And they saw the bikes and such. And then all of a sudden, they look at this fella standing on the street corner right in front of them, and they're like, "Are you Bill Allen?" And he's like, "Sure am." And uh, so there you go. They got to meet Bill Allen, Crew Jones. They saw the blazer. They took pictures with the bikes and the blazer, and and they're one of their favorite celebrities. And they hung out with us for a while. We took pictures with them and sent them on their way. It was it was pretty awesome. They, I'm glad that they got that kind of interaction. It was it was memorable for all of us. Well, I tell you, man, just seeing the photos, like because I follow the HB Tuesdays on Instagram, the Huntington Beach Tuesdays, and I talked to Martin about that. And I was like, man, I stumbled across this, and then I think that's where I originally saw it. And you had Martin and you had Bill there that one of those days that you had it out there in Huntington yeah. Beach. And I was like scratching my head going, now, wait a minute. Because even me, like I follow the stuff like religiously, but it made me do a double take seeing the bikes on top of it. It's really awesome what you did. And to be able to put together the Christian Hollings bike is pretty awesome. You know, I know a few guys have done it over the years, but it's not something you see every day. I've never seen one in person and I thought that was a very cool nod. When I look at the photos from the Rad event, which some of them I shared, others I'll share for the first time, I mm-hmm. took some 360 video or uh, photos of in inside the cab of the Blazer. And you know, mm-hmm. to your point, you've got the signatures, you've got the Cooper, uh, the hockey mask, which I, I still want to get one of those. Uh, you've got kind of an old school BMX, and then you've got a couple shirts, the uh, script, things like that. I mean, you really took it to the next level. Uh, a little bit more so than just you know saying hey I've got a red blazer you know what I mean and I think that's pretty badass. Yeah, uh, the uh, the helmet the the hockey helmet Tyler Culver out here in California he was nice enough to help me with that. Yeah, um, you know Tyler Tyler was a big help. Tyler also has the uh, Bart Connor bike he and uh, he's let me he's he has loaned me the bike for some v- events where I've needed to have all three bikes oh, and cool. Hell Track was one of them and I'm sure you remember seeing the Bart Connor bike there. Yep in the mix of Christian Hollings, Crew Jones, Bart and Bart Taylor, uh, having all three bikes there for, for that event and in Texas at hell track. So we just really wanted to represent. We really wanted to go in, um, with the whole thing. And, and, you know, we went in with the blazer, we went in with all three bikes. We had, like you said, we had, uh, some costume stuff. We had the crew Jones Jersey crew Jones Jersey. Uh, one of the local, uh, one of the locals and employees there in Texas uh, at the Hell Track event is a costume designer, yes. and she does, a lot of, she does a lot of cosplay. She builds a lot of different costumes, and she was really kind enough for me. We got to know each other a little bit during the weekend there, and she has since made another costume for me uh, exactly like hers, and, sh- and um, there are some unique things that are put on the suit so that we know that it is hers, and we know which one it is. And, um, we put some, you know, unique identifying markings on it for the future. So, um, really given her, I, I gosh, I have yeah, her name so, with so I have, yeah, I have it here. It's, I think I don't want to butcher it. It's Carrie Celeste. I think it is. That's it. You got it. Carrie Celeste. Yeah. And that's, the, yeah. And, and she is a cosplay costume designer there in Texas and a phenomenal costume designer. And I just wanted to make sure she got credit for that because she did a phenomenal job. And so we were able to put that suit on Bill Allen's wife for the Hollywood Christmas parade. It's the first time anybody wore it. Never really had any intent for somebody to wear it, but uh, she wore it and it fit perfect. And so with him with the shirt and her with the suit driving the, the blazer, it was it was really awesome. Awesome. It really put it all together. Yeah, it did. And for anyone, if you're out there, um, look up. It's K-A-I-R-I. Celeste, C E L E S T E. If you click on Instagram, the three in the middle, you click on the third one. I tagged her in one of my posts from June twenty first. What was cool is she took a couple photos with me in front of your Corvette. Uh, one she's smiling, one she's not, which was kind of funny. But I met her 
through Instagram leading up to the event. And then when I got there, I was like, hey, I know you. And I was like, are you that? And she and we started talking. Very, very cool girl. Um, I think what she did was awesome, and it's it's pretty cool. I didn't realize there was the connection there that the outfit that you were talking about in the parade that she had made another one. So, you know, kudos to you because – you're starting to have this pretty awesome collection. And I mean, BMX bikes alone can, you know, Devin, they can they can bring out some smiles, right? You know, you bring a couple of bikes out and people are like, oh snap, I remember when I was a kid, right? But you take, you know, my buddy Tony, he's throwing the bikes on top of his truck a couple times. And just seeing that, but th- then you say, okay, a blazer that looks like the one from the movie and some memorabilia and then some bikes. I mean, dude, you got people freaking tripping over themselves. I bet, man. But then I play. But then I, we play the soundtrack on the outside <laughs> speakers. We we move along. We move along with the soundtrack. I yep. mean, we really take you there. You know, the only thing we can't do is provide the smell of whatever it smelled like that day. But right, right. You know, it, it's it's really something we wanted to move people with. We really wanted to 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 bring the smiles, like you say, the happiness. Um, you can see the passion. You can see people's minds turning from back of the day. They're like. Oh man, I remember when we get a lot of cool stories from a lot of people, whether it be, I was a rad fan or I had this bike, you know, they, we get a lot of the fans. We get a lot of people who just maybe owned a bike that was an among us from that year. Mm -hmm. Uh, We get, I get stopped a lot of times at these shows because simply we have this blazer that somebody back East used to have, but now it's all rested and gone. And to see one that, in a pristine condition like this, they 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 are excited. They, they remember their past, and Dude. I just I love to hear the stories from people. I, I you know take the time. We that's what we're there for is to make people enjoy what they're looking at and and listening to. Um, you know, and put them in a mood, make them make them happy. No, I was gonna say, and that's really you know a lot of the the avid listeners they know that you know that's what we're about with the podcast. When we talk about mini trucks and the bikes, and you know you really get a chance to bring some smiles to someone's face or like, yeah, I remember that. And, um, I also wanted to give a shout out to, uh, you mentioned Tyler J Culver. So it's T Y L E R J C U L V E R on Instagram. Now I did a double take the other day because I had posted, um, on, let's see, it was on Halloween this year. I posted a photo of him and his family. Well then, uh, no sooner later, a few weeks later, I was like, man, dude, the homie changed his Instagram. Uh, and he was the guy at the rad event where, uh, he's got two, uh, beautiful sons. I think it is one was, you know, dressed up as rad and and so on. And the whole family, they, they did this cool family photo. And I think he was the heavier cop, right? in The movie. And, um, yeah, he was, yeah, he was dressed as, he was dressed as the officer. Yeah. He was dressed as a motor cop and, uh, his wife was dressed as, uh, (sighs) What's her name? Uh, man, I'm going to get slammed for this. Oh, no, I no, forgot. no, 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 it's okay. I'm looking at it now. She was dressed as one of the, the crazy outfits. The two uh, twins, were they? Oh, no, the yeah, twins' the girlfriends. Team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so one of the girlfriends or one of the twins, uh, I, the name's right on the end of my tongue. And I'm, but, uh, and the boys were dressed up as uh, Crew Jones and um, uh, Bart. Bart. Yep. Bart, Con- Bart Taylor in the movie. Yeah. So they were dressed as the Mexers and, and the bikes were there. Their bikes were done up and yeah, they went all out as a surprise. We didn't know they were going to do that when they showed up at the party that night at hell track and you know, good for them, man. That was a hundred percent, hundred and ten percent dedication for that. Uh, and that's the kind of things that make that whole event fun. Was it, was it just us that were, you know, needed to be there for the show, but then the fans come out dressed and they're dedicated and taking it over the top. And, uh, we, we enjoyed that. You know, that was, that was really cool. We, we enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy. There's a local guy on the radio that I listen to and he sometimes joke, like I've been to the Tampa comic con once and it's like, you know, I don't get into, you know, I'm not a huge comic book fan or I, you know, I don't, I would never think to like dress up as like star Wars and all this stuff. But when I think about what really moved me as a child, like this movie, you know, we think about, well, damn, man, we went to the middle of Texas. I mean, you you had a huge, like, financial, you know, uh, obligation to get these vehicles out there, uh, to build these bikes and do this. And, you know, it's very similar because we, you know, we have a passion for something that, you know, we love. So it's very cool, to your point. And I wanted to kind of talk just a little bit. Sure. Uh, when, when you talk about the 
um, the tribute vehicles, and you talk about, um, I think you said it's called the Star Cars International. Uh, yeah, t- Star Cars International. Tell us a little bit about some of what that group does for maybe the community. So Star Cars International is uh, is uh, uh, the, the head fellow that runs that organization is Nathan Truman, and he's out of the Los Angeles area. Uh, there's a lot of different chapters um, around the United States with Star Cars, but that's the that's the lead group. And um, Nathan runs uh, an organized Star Car group where you have to own a either original screen used or a tribute style star car mm-hmm. that, that pretty well needs to be, you know, on and looks like one of the cars from the movie. Um, and uh, generally it's something that's been driven or has a lot of screen time for whatever movie that it comes from. And it's really interesting to see which vehicles show up. There's a lot of them and most, most of them all you would know. Um, some of them are even real cars that are tributes to cartoons. We have, pizza planet the toyota pickup truck yes. you know that's a cartoon but we have it and it looks real life and kids love to see a cartoon in real life you know we have mystery machine we have um teenage mutant ninja turtles and their bus so some of these cartoon uh, fantasies we are are in reality um you know real metal nut and bolt and they're drivable and so these vehicles are we we go to a lot of different charity events and some of it's uh you know hospital type charity events uh it may just be you know we do the, a lot of parades during the holidays so um uh, we do a lot of different charity events we go there, there's just a lot of different organizations that call upon us like like you know like i said some hospital events uh uh we go to like the steve mcqueen type um car show um they have a lot of different really cool things uh there's so many so many during the year that that we get to go to and so many i don't get to go to um I was invited to go to the the Peterson Peterson Auto Museum in Los Angeles. I can't make the show this week with the with the vehicles, and that's that's a really cool '80s and '90s show. Mm-hmm. That's like right up our alley. But Star Cars does a lot of really cool charity events with the vehicles, and so we we really try to get signed up with the group and go to the different events uh, and functions. So you can follow them, StarCarsCentral.com, Star Cars International. And you can go to the website and find those. And it should list a lot of the different vehicles that are within the organization. Yeah, man. Dude, it it's awesome when you find people that are into the same things. And, you know, we've got a lot of our, you know, what I call friends of ours in the Airhead Nation. You know, they listen because they're mini truckers. They maybe grew up with BMX bikes. They love air suspension. But what's awesome is the Christian Hollins Blazer was also considered a mini truck, although I think it's four by four, right? Uh, it's still, yeah, it's a four by four. So it's it, it's still pretty cool, and I just tell you, man, these BMX bikes eventually. Uh, there's, I've seen collections. We just met a guy here in in the Tampa Bay area that started a uh, a track back in the '80s here that's real popular. He was telling me like he's got a collection over hundreds of thousands of dollars of these bikes. He's like, yeah, I spent. You know, a lot of money in a three-day weekend buying bar, uh, bike from I think Martin, and and he collects a lot of old BMX bikes. But the mm-hmm. the reason why I say that is we always say you know on to rise, you know prices are on to rise, and I tell you what, the bikes, the whole market is continuing to blow up. So you know I, I tell anybody that hey, if you want to get in on a BMX bike that uh, is going to bring back some memories, get in on it now because man, they continue to go up, don't they, Devin? They do. They continue to go up. And the hardest part is in, in the everyday is that we all end up, you know, we sell the bikes that we ride when we're younger. We sell the bikes when we get a little older. You know, we think about, oh, it'd be great to hang on to it. And then when we're 20 years later, we're looking for the bikes that we once rode when we were kids and the bike values have gone up. And and it's um, it's it's pretty incredible. Some of the bikes now, you know, some of the 70s bikes that are out there, yes. uh, the prices are phenomenal. The parts are extremely hard for some of these guys to find to really make them uh top notch you know the 80s bikes some of the bikes are getting some of the parts are getting really hard to find depending on what their builds are but you know it there's there's a budget for everybody out there if they're really into that and they want to build something um you know they can they don't have to spend a ton of money to build a really really nice 
you know 80s bike or they, they don't have to they don't have to go totally rare and extreme they can build something really nice and find some nice parts and enjoy it make it a rider it doesn't have to be just a show pony it's something that they can get on and ride around and and feel proud yeah and really kind of bring back those memories there's a lot of parts out there like planet bmx uh you've got um uh and there's pork chop bmx there's a lot of different places that are selling a lot of parts and you know, yeah, it's one thing if you want to go all vintage, NOS, this and that. Yeah, you're going to spend a lot. But, yeah, you can get out there and you can, you know, not spend as much and really enjoy it. I like on your Crew Jones bike that it has the, the Pro Class wheels on it. That's one thing I need for mine. It's got the little the drill deals thing where you can see the blue in yeah, between. The Pro Class. Yeah, yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. I need to get different pedals for mine. But it's it's awesome because there is a huge community out there of people that are willing to help each other. I always tell people, too, if you go on bmxmuseum.com, you can really sign up there for the free account. Uh, you can search for things. I think you have to have a paid uh, deal to uh, actually list items, but uh, that's pretty cool as well. But uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your son. So, you know, you mentioned that he had raced. Uh, do you have, like, a rich racing culture in your family? Or tell us a little bit about that. I would like to think so. Wouldn't, wouldn't everybody yeah, have to right like there, to have right. something, something, but <laughs> my grandfather raced Indy cars to some degree. And I don't, I don't really know. That was, I never have seen a lot of pictures. I only know what the family's told me. So there was a racing background coming up prior to me. And then, um, I, I just grew up going to the races, just like a lot of kids going to the track and just watching and becoming a fan of, of somebody that you looked up to on the local level and you thought they were superheroes, you know? And then uh, as I got older and, and had a little extra money, whether I really had it or not, uh, right. I built my first car. Uh, I had a partner that we split everything 50-50, and we actually got into road racing first. We actually got in with, like, SCCA and did some some uh, some road racing that way. And then um, a little while later, due to some family uh, having some illnesses, I wanted to race closer to home so they didn't have to travel to where we were racing the cars at. So we got into circle track close to home. And uh, started doing a little bit of the uh, circle track asphalt bumping and banging and um, met a whole nother group of friends. And uh, those people are still still close to me. We had a really good time with that. Then I got married, you know, and then uh, I didn't want to stop. It's like a bad habit. Yep. So my son's born at five years old, actually four and a half or so. We're, we're at the go kart at the go kart track. And um, did a lot of practicing. And at five years old, we put him in and started competing. So from. From five to eight, he raced competitively and had one championship out of the deal. Uh, we could have had two, but with my job, it tended to get in the way a little bit and caused him to to uh, not be successful on the second championship. But he's very humble and understands that that uh, my work is what pays the bills and makes us go to the track. Lets us go to the track and and have that mm -hmm. ability. But uh, he never complains. If I tell him we can't go, he never complains. So. At eight years old, we got into what they call uh, bandoleros. It's a um, closed cockpit, full containment type, uh, small race car. Kids from eight to 14 race those cars. Um, and we got into that uh, bandolero still here locally close to home in Southern California and raced that car uh, when we could uh, on the circle track asphalt as well. But uh, the job just kind of got in the way, man. It started just, it's, it's just one of those things where it's something you have to do. You got to keep the bills paid so you can have the fun mm -hmm. and, and do the hobbies that we, that we love. And, uh, it just seemed to be coming more and more distant. So, um, you know, in the meantime, we, we just kind of had to put the, the race cars on the back burner. We, we sold his car about a month ago. Um, I sold my car a year or two ago and, uh, we're kind of now out of the car racing, so we're really kind of focusing on the movie car stuff. We're having a lot of fun with that. Um, that's a whole other group of friends that we have, so we really try to focus on that. Like I said, uh, some cool events that we just were involved in. Like I said, the Hollywood Christmas Parade. Uh, we're supposed to go to another really cool one this weekend, but unfortunately, I have to work, and that's gonna not able. We're not able to get there, but. Um, uh, we're going to just keep pushing on. We've got the 33rd year coming up here. 33rd anniversary of rad is coming up. Um, what I'm hearing from some of the movie talents is that, uh, there are some big things, um, that possibly coming the way nothing. I don't think is set in stone yet. I don't know any details, so I can't share that. I don't know anyway. I'm just, I only know what I hear. Yep. So I'm just, you know, kind of, kind of moving the moving the wind a little bit to let you know the possibility that something may be coming down the pipe but i i'm just like everybody else i'm just waiting to hear and um 
it, it should be fun to hear what some of the things are coming down with. So I think this 33rd year is going to, is going to be a lot of fun. So I, I hope, uh, that uh, some things really get put in stone so we can all meet back again, everybody that went to hell track and the many people that didn't get to go, the many people that missed hell track and put down what you're doing and go to these events, just turn, turn, turn life off and show up at these. I got to tell you this, that was extraordinary, man, dude, it was a lot of fun. It was hot. I mean, Texas, I thought Florida's bad. Everybody knows <laughs> Texas hot, but you know, it, it is, I mean, it, it's totally true because when I first saw it, I was like, man, I don't know if I can go to that. I mean, that's that, that. And, I, and I started thinking, I was like, man, I go to truck shows all over. I mean, what's the big deal? And I literally flew in there. I drove the hour, whatever it was, got some lunch, went to the event. And then, you know, I stayed all day. And then I had to, you know, I had a commitment there in Louisiana for a big truck show. So then I drove yeah. all night. And one of my buddies was like, you know, when I told him what I was going to do, he thought I was messing around. I was like, no, dude, I'm going 100 miles an hour. And uh, it was awesome. Now, speaking of the, some of the events, what was cool is a big, avid listener and a friend of ours, Chris Burns with uh, CS Metalworks on Instagram, he was out back in September, end of the month, and he sends me a text that day in the afternoon, and he goes, yo, man, I, I just met this guy, Devin, a uh, good dude. And I go, yeah, you know, and I, and I knew he immediately, and you were out there doing one of those events, you got the DeLorean next to you and whatnot, but... You know, I think it's great what you're doing, man. You're bringing smiles to people's faces. You're getting out there. You know, you built this tribute vehicle, and you're really doing it for a good cause. But oh, well, by we the way, tribute vehicles. Don't, don't forget, we got the Corvette too. Yeah. We we have the Corvette, the grand prize, and and I can honestly yep. tell you, Bill Allen has had the pleasure. I've never posted <laughs> videos of it, but Bill Allen has had the pleasure of driving that car, and that car has been signed by all those legends from many of the legends from Rad. I mean, you know, Bill Bill Allen. Eddie Fiola, Martin Aparijo, uh, Jose Yanez, uh, Bart Connor, who played Bart Taylor. Uh, we've got a bunch of signatures in the in the court. Kevin Hall. We've got a bunch of those guys that were generous enough to put their signatures in the Corvette and in the Blazer on the bikes. And you know it, it, that was the one thing, uh, Jason, that kept coming up is after we built the Blazer, everybody was like, "Well, what about the Corvette?" Right, because they're both like the. Uh, what do they call them? The like with the DeLoreans, they'll call them the uh, the main car. You know, like those are the main two. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you know, the the thing we got was is that even though the Corvette is is only seen you know here and there throughout the movie, and and Bart Taylor the character does drive it with the twins, is kind of a slap in the face that we're you know we're almighty, we can drive the grand prize vehicle <laughs> before right. you know because we're the we're the number one riders. It it was it was kind of cool. So people kept saying, well, build the vet, build the vet, find the vet. And so we went out and, and, uh, found the vet. We got, you know, we put the car together and, um, with very little effort, I found, found something that was extraordinary and uh, I didn't have to go very far to find it. Um, it was, it was a third, I'm the third owner of the car. So believe it or not, nice. it was only two owners. And the first owner sold because of a divorce after two years. So that, the uh, gentleman that owned the Corvette before me was a longtime owner, and I got full maintenance records. I mean, it was unreal what I got when I purchased the car. Uh -huh. So it's solid. I drive it. It's it's you know I don't drive it all the time, but I I can drive it on a moment's notice, and um, it's nice to take that top off, man, and and just go for the ride. Uh, but it was so cool when I had a chance to let Bill Allen drive the Grand Prize Corvette because in the movie, you know, we never saw Bill, and we never saw Crew Jones drive the Corvette. He never he never drove it off the track at the end um we see him drive the, the blazer with with um christian hollins in the movie but um we we did take some pictures and and if you go to the christian hollins site you will find the corvette with martin eddie and and bill there uh with the corvette so we did take it to texas and we we shared it with the fans um and had the banners on the car and i thought we got some really good pictures from that event because they were kind enough they wanted the, the car inside inside yep. that venue yep and i man you know my son and and some of the uh faculty that was there they put some some lights behind it up against the wall and really really dressed it up and um a friend of mine robert was taking some pictures there uh robert ward answered took some really good pictures for us of the car he shared some of his photographs of that and um you know 
So yeah, we have two. And now people are saying, well, Hey, what about the, what about the <laughs> suburban? Can you build the suburban? And I'm like, you know, and the strangest thing Jason is I have access to that year's suburban with <laughs> oh, that color interior sitting at my friend's shop. I could actually do the project, but the, but, but the reality is I, don't have a place to store it when I if I were to do it. Yeah, I, no, I don't. I, have, I know, I'm, like, I'm so, out of room. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you know the hardest thing to say is like, you know, we don't ever want to say no. Like, you know, like a Lincoln will come up, and I'll be like, man, I could, and I'm going, you know, I got too much shit taken apart, or I got, you know, sometimes <laughs> I tell my son all the time too, like, we gotta enjoy what we got, you know. So um, yeah, and you know, it'd be cool. I'd really like to see somebody else build one of the other vehicles. I mean, you know, there's there, it's. It's uh, I've got some star car friends that I've met through through um, either star cars or on the on on social media and they've got some other types of cars. But, you know, I found some people that are into some other movies here and there. And yet they've got a rad collection in the midst of it. Yep. You know, and they're they're big <laughs> avid car people and they've got you know, they've got a movie car from another movie and they've got a huge collection of memorabilia from that movie. And then over here in the corner, they've got this this smaller but very detailed collection from rad but no car and i'm thinking man build one of them you know you you have something different than i got and then we can have a collection across the country yep but uh, yeah and and what i was going to say earlier too is that you know what i love is you're bringing smiles to people's faces you're also you're you know you involved your son like when we had met you said yeah my son and i we kind of got into making these bikes and it man, you know, like my son, he wants something to do with my bikes. He's like, ah, oh, whatever. I want to get on that, you know, YouTube. But to me, it's like it, it's a great father son thing that you've kind of created. And then, you know, oh by the way, with the car and the blazer and these events, like you know, you're getting out, you're getting off your phones a little bit, right? We're all addicted to those, and you're just getting out and having some good old fun. And that's what I really like about it. But you mentioned the Christian Holling site. Can you give the listeners? Um, if someone said, "Hey, man, this sounds all awesome," how would they see some of these photos and some of the, you know, how would they get in contact with you? So I have a Facebook site. It's actually me and not actually Christian Hollings from the movie. It's not Lori Laughlin. <laughs> it's actually me. So I am a guy. So don't send anything strange to me because that's weird. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> and, and that's and that's weird. So uh, you can go to uh, Christian Hollings. So. You can spell that out if, if you since you're probably looking at it and uh, Facebook Christian Hollings, um, and with that, that's the uh, site that has the Blazer and the Corvette, um, and uh, that actually is is me when you when you or if you attempt to contact me, um, and uh, I'll be glad to add you on the friends list. You know, if, if you're if you're a little bit strange, man and you got some pretty negative things going on in your life and you're posting it on your social media, I might not add you. Right, right. Trying to keep it pretty positive for the rest of the fans that follow because there is bleed over to other other folks that, that follow and I just I don't like yeah. the negative vibe. So I try to watch everybody that that um that comes onto the site. Um some pretty good folks. I've met some really good people. So you know such as yourself, man. And yep. And look where we are now. This isn't the first time that you and I have had had conversations about this. Yep. And, uh, you know, like I said, I got to keep it positive is a small world. Your friend walked up to me in Southern California and you're in Florida. Yep. <laughs> he says, hey, no, I know a guy and he's a friend and he saw this vehicle in Texas. And I'm like, man, that is so cool. Yeah, dude, it's it was, cool. it was awesome. And before we started recording, if you do add, it's a uh, Christian C H R I S T I A N and then H O L L I N G S. You'll see the uh, profile pic there uh, with the blazer. But before we started recording, we talked a little bit about that Star Central, the Star Car Central, the photos that you posted. Now, you can see some photos on the Facebook page, but once you add him as a friend, you'll get a chance to see what he talked about with Bill Allen and his lovely wife there cruising the Blazer. And then I think it was the News Channel 9 uh, caught you guys as well. So it's cool, man, because you're out. You're about, you're a positive dude. You got your son involved. I mean, what more in life can you really want? You know what I mean? You know, and the vibe and the vibe that we, we try to try to portray from just us as my son and I, as a team with the vehicle is, is that positive vibe. And, um, we meet so many other people that, that have the same vibe, uh, whether it's through BMX, 
uh, and the and some of the bicycle shows we go to, or if it's through Star Cars, and that's StarCarCentral.com. You know, Star Car International or Star Car central.com and that's a site that you can look up and see nathan truman's uh la organization and uh you'll see all the different cars in our in our club at the hollywood it, it, through the hollywood chapter we have san diego ventura we've got different chapters around other states so there is a wide variety of cars and if you go to that site you can check some of those out and see some of the cars that are involved yeah that's that, great that, man you know, with, so we, it's kind of cool to uh, take our rad fans to these different events with these other star cars because, you know, some of the other owners were rad fans and uh, they come over to us and they're like, wow, you know, glad we're here. It's cool. It's just so cool. We, the people come out of the woodwork, man, that are, that are rad fans. And we, we enjoy meeting those people when we go to the star car events because there's a lot of big movies out there and the, some of the cars are very famous and very easily to spot, very easy to spot. And um, it's just fun when we get a chance to to be a part of that as well. And, and listen to, like I said earlier, some of the stories that people have to tell us about uh, what we get a lot is that the movie inspired them to get out on their BMX bikes or or they had to have the Chevy Blazer because, you know, or, or they always wanted the Corvette. But somehow it positively inspired them to get out and do something, get out of the house, ride their bike, have fun, do jumps. We've heard a lot of different stories like that. And, you know, we've even heard a few that, that believe it or not, they say, oh, the movie changed my life and took me out of a dark place. And, well, hey, more power to you, man. If that's what it did for you, that's awesome. Dude, Glad yeah. to see you here today. Um, and, uh, you know, BMX, cars, these cars, you know, the car shows, the lowrider shows the, with the trucks. Uh, it's all a positive vibe, man. It's it's cool. It's 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 bringing people together. To share something they love everybody's got a little bit of their own personality in each vehicle and uh, it creates conversation like you said social media gets put down for a little bit it creates some conversation people can sit down in a chair and do some old-fashioned uh face-to-face -face conversation which you know it that's kind of rare these days especially for the younger folks to put stuff down and actually talk yeah it is man it really is and i would encourage anyone out there if you um you know we gave away some of the information but on Instagram, just type in uh, Christian uh, Hollings, and it'll pull up. You'll see underneath the name, it'll say Rad Racing Movie Cars, and uh, you'll see there's about um, you know 13 posts with some cool stuff, including the the vintage BMX bikes. Dude, man, Devin, it, it's been a, a, an honor. It's been a pleasure to really kind of get a chance to talk with you a little bit more. I hope to make my way out, as we talked about before we started maybe to Los Angeles area next October is going to be the goal. So I'd love to sync up, maybe hit the Peterson Museum, do some things out that way. But, dude, man, what I tell you is stay positive, keep hustling, and, uh, man, just keep it up, bro. All right, man. Well, you're doing a good thing. We we love your show, and uh, we love listening to the rad show that you did from uh, regard in regards to Texas, and we look forward to hearing this show. There's a lot of rad fans out there, and they, they support you, and we, we just want to support them. So, yeah, man, thanks for, for uh, talking with us and allowing us to um, spread the info and, and, uh, and the joy across your, uh, your airways. Yo, yo. So as I mentioned, we've got Bill Allen, and uh, I had a chance to meet him a couple times, and we're finally getting a chance to sit down. But, uh, you know, Bill, I just want to kind of say, hey, welcome to our lifestyle, the podcast, where we hit on everything from mini trucks to old school BMX, man. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we appreciate it. And I also wanted to kind of wish you a happy belated birthday. As I always say, born day. I'm uh, also born in November, so uh, happy belated, man. Thank you. I've racked up a bunch at this point, so uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. November 7th, right? That's true. Good stuff, man. Well, you know, we have a lot that I'd like to kind of hit on uh, during, you know, this time. And I wanted to kind of just, a lot of the listeners know who you are. And, you know, I kind of talk about the movie and some of the things, you know, as we've kind of went on this journey the last four years with our podcast. But uh, why don't you just give kind of like a high-level overview as, of, you know, who you are? Who is Bill Allen? Who is Bill Allen? Well, I've been an actor most of my adult life, and uh, I'm also a musician. I'm proud to say I still uh, play out live, but mostly uh, I've acted uh, since I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. I did my first movie uh, out of Dallas, Texas, and soon moved to Los Angeles and started doing television shows like 
family ties and Steven Spielberg's amazing stories. And then <clears throat> the great Hal Needham saw me on an episode of Hill Street Blues and brought me in to audition for a BMX-related movie that I hadn't heard of at the time. Nobody had. And uh, six weeks later, I was on the set of Rad in Calgary, Canada. So this is uh, what I'm mostly known for, what's going to be uh, in my, obitu <laughs> my obituary and mostly my <laughs> probably my tombstone, too. So, um, yeah, it's kind of uh, 33 years later. It's kind of had this enormous revival where you'll see Rad, uh, like, parodied or talked about on, like, the Goldbergs or... Tosh.0, oh, I've done a number of times, and uh, it's it's a, a real seminal movie for the kids who grew up in the '80s. The blockbuster generation mm -hmm. loved it and, and 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 ate it up essentially. So uh, I'm real lucky to have that as a part of my legacy. Yeah, well, it's awesome that you've embraced it, and we'll kind of hit on that, which you know we're very appreciative of from a rad fans standpoint. Also, you kind of hit on with family ties. Like, I'm a huge Back to the Future fan. You had the pleasure of working and with and being on the set with Michael J. Fox, you know, with the hit TV show. Uh, what was that experience like? Just overall, any memories that you have from uh, from that time period? Oh, um, man. That was, that was a magical time in my life. Uh, but that particular experience was just huge. I mean, it was probably, uh, you know, the biggest sitcom on the air at the time michael fox was on fire mm -hmm. and uh, uh you know he was he's just one of those guys that that is representative of what you're trying to do you know who who really knocked it out of the park and uh i had coincidentally uh met bob zemeckis uh, to audition for the role he ended up doing while i'm working on family ties he's shooting back to the future at night and rehearsing uh, family ties during the day. So uh, he was, he was doing amazing work and on zero sleep. So uh, as far as the show experience was just off the charts. Great. I mean, uh, it, it was a full juggernaut running machine by the time I jumped on. And, and uh, it's one of those things that, that will endure long after I'm gone, just because it's one of those shows that, that was such a big deal. Yeah, definitely. And we'll touch upon your book. And what I would tell everyone is, you know, we'll have Bill kind of share where you can go out and buy it. But what what I thought was cool is you shared a rare photo that I had never seen where um, you're standing there with uh, Mark uh, Price. And what I thought was funny is I didn't even notice that uh, until, of course, you have it in the caption. You said, check out uh, Michael Fox smoking and photobombing us. And uh, then I see, oh, he's peeking out down there. So it seems like you guys had a lot of good times, uh, you know, together on the set there. Nothing but good times. And, and he was as, as sweet and as endearing as could be. And I got invited to the, the rap party at the end of the season. And he came up and asked me how I'm doing, fully recognized me. And, you know, he's just one of the guys. So uh, I, I don't know, man. I, there, there's nothing to dislike about that. I mean, I'm not a sitcom fan per se, but, but to be a part of that scene in the eighties and, and, and work with him, uh, who, who's just an icon now, you know, that's cool stuff. Yeah, most definitely. Well, speaking of your book for anyone that hasn't read it, I do suggest it. Now I was going to plug Amazon, but I know that you have a better uh, place for folks to go. Uh, you have the website listed in the back of the book, but what would be the easiest way, Bill, if someone wanted to get out there and read this book that I have right here that's uh, really rad, man? Actually, I, I've got some news surrounding this. The only way you can find it right now is on my website, which is myradcareer.com. That's the name of the book, myradcareer.com. And uh, fortunately, I've just been picked up by Beacon Books. We're doing an audio version soon. It's going to be available in bookstores and uh everywhere so uh, i'm really excited about that so we've taken it down off amazon for the time being because mm -hmm. I've, I've just signed a contract with uh, beacon for them to sell it worldwide but it is currently available through my own website exactly so thanks for sharing that detail myradcareer.com 
what um, what I would tell the listeners is don't be bamboozled into if you go to Amazon, there are a couple people selling the book for a very high price as the used price. Uh, you can get it for a very fair price on Bill's website. And uh, of course, we just shared that. But, you know, Bill, as we kind of transition into a little bit of the rad talk, uh, you know, my father had brought the movie home when I was just, you know, seven, eight years old. He kind of hinted at the rad event or the Hell Track event, uh, I should say, in 2018 about how certain age groups, you know, we've kind of fell in love with the movie. And one question I wanted to ask at that Hell Track event was, can you give us the lowdown? And I'm sure you've been asked this a million times on, you know, why is it not available on DVD, Blu-ray and streaming platforms? I know it has to do with money and copyright and stuff like that, but I just, I just don't know that our listeners really get the, the, the bottom answer on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't tell you that I know the real answer on that too. So, um, here we are 33 years later. Uh, and man, <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could say some things, but no, I can't. it's okay. No, it's fine. Uh, so, so, so uh, I, I feel that uh, something will be done with that property. Good. That's for all the, I can say. for that's the better. All I can okay. Say. Hopefully, that's all I got. That's all I got for you guys. Yeah, but, no problem. What What's important is the fans keep it going. I was just at the Grands in in Tulsa over the weekend, and uh, just met hundreds of people who still just latch onto that movie show it to their kids and it's kind of bigger than what it started out as is this little independent movie that that uh was meant for kind of a specific audience and, and it just kind of took off in a way that who who would expect it yeah uh, definitely know? and and what like one thing and and this is the last comment i'll make about the whole you know hopefully it'll eventually come out but I know just like five years ago, four or five years ago, like for instance, Vans tried to release the shoes and then there was a little bit of lawsuit and things like that over the the trademark and stuff like that. So to your point, there's this big um, drive for people that want them kind of merchandise and you've done a good job with the Rad Army, which we'll hit on. But uh, one thing that I wanted to also bring up is now what was it like being on the set? of you know let's say you know the tv set which you kind of talked about a little bit with uh, family ties but from a movie perspective you know for us we watch a movie and we're like oh wow look you know look how cool this was but oftentimes people don't realize that you know you might have only been on the rad set for two or three months uh but what was it like being on the set back in those days man it was it was magical that's all i can say mm -hmm. i mean i walked onto the set and i had never been exposed to that kind of writing Mm -hmm. as most of the world had, frankly, unless you were a BMX fan and getting the magazines. And now I'm walking onto the set with the guys who are on the cover of the magazine. Of course, Eddie and, and Martin and, and Pat and so many others uh, in the race world were uh, all at this one spot. And so I just I had this feeling it was going to be big. You know, I would look at kids on their bikes and they go, things are about to change around here. And, and, and in fact, they did. Mm -hmm. You know, it took a while for it to, to really explode on on home video. But I, I think the, the reaction for the people who know the movie is, is well known that these kids would go rent it weekend after weekend, watch it dozens of times over that weekend, and then um, eventually not return the movie <laughs> Or or the local video store owner would just feel bad and give them a copy. So uh, I, I just, I don't know of any other movie that's kind of had that a, a effect because it, it, it not only showed the sport, but it showed the lifestyle. It showed the way the kids interacted off the, uh, you know, off the track, so to speak, and, and dealing with the community. And, and so it really kind of provided a platform for a lot of latchkey kids because uh, crew was a, a child of a either a broken home or, or not rather his dad, I guess had died or something. That, that's what they alluded to in the script. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot, you know, a huge percentage of the population had a, a similar experience that they're, they're, they're one parent family. And uh, what did they do with that? If all you got is a bike and this kid rode his bike, out, you know, and, and above and beyond what anybody could expect. So that Rocky on a bike is 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 kind of 
uh, an a- adapt uh, app subscri- uh, uh, sorry uh, an apt uh, description of of how the movie played out and so i think people just really latched onto that and it became the favorite for so many i, I still talk to people to this day who just watch it again and again yeah and what's awesome is when you know, growing up in that era, a lot of people think of they think of Rad from BMX, Gleaming the Cube. You know, there were the couple, you know, a couple skateboard movies, but Gleaming the Cube in '89 kind of sticks out. And then you had North Shore, which was kind of like that uh, movie I love from a surfing standpoint. So it's kind of like we were lucky that we had a couple of these movies, if you will, that really captured that time period. One thing that a lot of the old school BMX guys, like the collectors, especially. They love the colors and the bikes and just the you know the different Skyway Mag wheels and things like that of that time. And when you go back and you watch Rad now, and you see to your point like all the different outfits and things like that that the riders wore, it really captured that time period. So, um, you know, pretty cool stuff. Now, are you ever you kind of hit on this, but are you ever surprised at how much love it continues to get? Because I know. Like our friend with the Christian Hollings blazer, right? Really good dude. Became friends with them. You know, you guys have went on the movie car thing, and you guys have done that. But man, you seem like you get a lot of love wherever you guys go in that thing with the bikes, and then of course with you being there, Bill. Yeah, I've done the Hollywood Parade and the Huntington Beach Parade with Devin Hayes and the car, and it's really special when people come up and not only see the truck, but then there's Crew Jones standing right next to it. Oh yeah. For some, for somebody who's a super fan, it, it's it's pretty great to watch that happen. So yeah, Devin Hayes is a great supporter of the movie. He also has an exact Corvette, like the one in the movie. So we do a lot of these events together. I also do events with Martin and Ed. We've been all over the country and also to Australia and New Zealand and England. So we do a lot of these events and uh, they're rad fans the world over. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And it was cool to meet Martin, um, you know, and Eddie at the hell track event. It was awesome that you guys really, and we'll hit upon it a little bit, but you guys did a great job. I know you were a big, you know, supporter of that entire event, and everybody was so cool, laid back, and uh, we just had a damn good weekend. Yeah, it was a great event for people who don't know. About a year and a half ago, Hell Track was recreated outside of Dallas at a place called Texplex Park, and they did a full scale recreation of Hell Track. And there was an actual race uh, and a uh, qualifying heats and and for the fans of the movie to show up and watch this thing go down myself i i was there uh bar connor was there martin ed a lot of uh, i think sheepdog was there a lot of writers from the movie it, it was just I, it, there was a lot of people just walking around in shock i mean it's it's just like <laughs> they walked onto the, uh, it's just like they walked onto the movie set and to the bold and the brave they got to drop in on that opening wall you know Oh, yeah. It was pretty spectacular. Yeah, I'll have to share. I didn't share all the pictures yet. I took I took some 360 photos. I took some wide angle. Just it was a really cool. And I was only able to go to the VIP day because I had another, you know, car show scraping the coast that I had to kind of, you know, bolt away to. But just for the one day, you know, again, wanted to say thanks for doing that. It was awesome. And earlier this year when we were at Spring Fling here in Florida over in the Daytona area, uh, you and I kind of joked a little bit about some of the memes that have made their way around about Lori Laughlin, and you know, not to hit on that too much. I do have to say, whoever made that one meme about the SATs and she had a way around it, that was, I think, the the best one I've seen, man. So uh, kudos to whoever did that. Wink, wink. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Well, you got to give it to the screenwriter because there she is in the school <laughs> trading test scores for cheap T-shirt labor. Now her husband made his living off selling cheap t-shirts and 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 she's trading test scores dude i mean there's a hole in the matrix there so i i've lived long enough where where i see life imitate art (laughs) and when that happens it gets really very bizarre yeah yeah you can't make this shit up man that's all i can say you can't you can't make that up and Uh. and you know, uh, I'll I'll just say this because I, I follow this story very closely because you know I'm will forever be connected with connected with Lori and 
and, and uh, we were friends and friendly. And then I screwed up my first date with her and my only date with her. <laughs> I know it's a funny story, but truth is I, I'd like the girl and I like her, you yeah. know, and, and, and uh, for this to go down, I, I don't know anybody that's not pretty shocked yeah. and disturbed over it. And, and a lot of people take it very personally. So, um, I, I, I think the lesson is nobody gets off free. Everybody's got something to deal with, you know, and yeah. she's just doing it in such a spectacular fashion that people are shocked because here's somebody who ostensibly had the perfect life and the perfect lifestyle and hundred million dollars in the bank and this big career. And, uh, yeah, and Full like House was, up. you know, yeah, Full House comes back, and you, you know, and then to your point, it's just like, uh, you know, you just, you sometimes, and, and I think when someone's such high pedestal that there's other people that want to see them fall, but at the end of the day, I think you summed it up best that, you know, everybody has, you know, something going on, you know, in their life, and with her, this is something I would never want to be dealing with. Well, it, yeah, it, it points to yeah to something deeper going on and and boy is is she going to get uh punished for that for 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 following that kind of egotism and that's not that's not healthy for anybody so uh you know it's a it's fraught with traps out here you know the the show business i guess is is a little more detrimental to people's life and egos if they're not if they're not careful it's not like most other jobs and and uh you get used to anything very quickly and she's human just like everybody else so she you get used to your surroundings and and what you're used to so uh she's about to have a new normal (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's just crazy Anyway, God bless her, you know. Well, one of our, I call him a friend of ours on Instagram. It's the 80s garage. There's an underscore between the 80s and then a garage. Uh, He recently changed his Instagram name, but he's got a, the only copy that I, you know, he's kind of said this and I'm, I'm pretty confident. He has the laser disc of rad, which as you know, those are, those are sought after and they come up on eBay here and there, but he has one signed by Lori Laughlin and she even took a photo and, What's funny is uh, the the gentleman Devin, as you mentioned, from the Christian Hollings Blazer and kind of that whole deal. He had even tried to get her to sign something, and it didn't seem like Bill that she really embraced it. Um, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool that the homie he has the laser disc that sign. That's probably about the only copy out there. No, there's more copies out there. Oh, a couple more. They, okay, they they pop up occasion. So does the LP. I saw that recently, and sometimes you'll get a sealed. Oh, right, um, the tape cassette and stuff. Uh, uh, VHS. I would say I've got among the most rare items. In other words, I've got a DVD burned off a fairly poor quality VHS that was recorded in Canada that's, oh, got, seven yes. del- that's got seven deleted scenes that have never been seen in the United States wow. or in the video store or anything. So it, it's about... I don't know, eight, ten minutes of, of new footage that nobody's ever seen outside Canada, and it's one viewing that a guy um, taped and then forgot he had it on uh, his machine. So I actually got that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome mm-hmm. to see. I know, like, on the, the, the Raddus 25 and some of these collectors and, like, you know, even the guy I mentioned, the 80s Garage, like, there are guys that have collected. I even saw someone, I think, on one of the Facebook groups that uh, had been gifted, like, the script or was a copy of it maybe, something like that. But it is a mind-blowing to me that the the stuff that people have, have collected, you know, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Well, there's not a lot of official merch out there. Right, right, yep. There's, there's except for the band's shoe, the original run, and then, you know, like you said, the bands did a um, repop of that. But otherwise, you know, it's movie posters and then, like I said, VHS or LaserDisc or LPs, you know. Yeah, definitely. Now, you mentioned earlier the Tosh.0. Oh. I always thought that was kind of cool. Like, I, I think he's a funny guy overall. Love his show and his format. But it was like you guys kind of had forged a little bit of a bond to the point that on the back of your paper copy, 
you even have the awesome quote from him, but uh, he seems like an 80s guy, like at heart, you know? Uh, I didn't get to know him, uh, really working with him. He's okay. the busiest guy in show business, but um, I know that when he plays live, or often when he uh, has concerts, he'll project like the opening scene of Brad <laughs> on the big on the big screen before he comes out. So, you know, I think he's just one of those super fans who stays up at night thinking about this stuff. And <laughs> maybe maybe it was the last time I was on. He, uh, he's like crew. Che-, he opens the show. Crew cheats in the qualifying races. Roll tape, you know, and it shows me cutting across <laughs> and and, cut, <laughs> and, and so. It's just he's one of these guys who actually sits around and thinks about this stuff. Right. And, and, <laughs> and so it's hysterical. And when I'm not on the show, he references me a lot, actually. Like, hey, I know Bill Allen. And yada, yada. <laughs> so it, it, how cool is that, dude? Yeah, no, that's awesome. One trivia thing that I, I don't think a lot of people know about the movie, and I, I'm pretty sure I got this right, my understanding that it was R.L. Osborne that's on the cover, you know, doing, you know, of the VHS tape, that artwork. And I forget if that was talked about at the Hell Track event, but do do I have that understanding right as far as you know? I happen to know that's correct. He's on his red line, and I know the guy who bought that bike. Oh, wow. It was, in, it was, it was at uh, Red Line headquarters for some time. Anyway. He paid seventy thousand dollars. Holy crap! Yeah, I've heard of the bikes going up. Talked to a guy locally that was telling me he's got a pretty big collection. He's even bought from from Eddie and Martin apparently before at these different shows, but I've never heard of one that high. And it is it it never ceases to amaze me how much the OS or old school BMX stuff continues to kind of go up in price, almost better than the stock market in some cases. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's just like comic books or anything else. They're not making any more of those, so the old ones go for uh, what they can get for them. Yeah, definitely. Now, let's talk a little bit about, you kind of mentioned the Rad merch and, and, and whatnot, but I think it was pretty awesome, man. Around the time I met you and I kind of saw how you were embracing the whole Rad Army, uh, how might someone find out more information or become a part of that group? Uh, let's see. Uh, we were having some issues with the server recently, so I'll make sure that's, uh, up and running, but it's rad. Uh, I'm sorry. Helltrackbmx.com or, or you can, uh, message me directly through Facebook. Got it. And my Instagram handle is bill slim Allen. If that's any helps, you know? Yep, definitely. And, and I remember you guys kind of had a Facebook group going as well. Is that still happening? Cause I haven't been on Facebook as much. Yeah, that's uh, part of the deal with the Rad Army. So you'll you'll get some swag and and some love for me on a phone call and uh, you know kind of uh, some perks for just joining. And then the Facebook group is where we all kind of gather and uh, we announce different events and and I do a lot of videos and remote stuff and interviews. We get some legends up there interviewing with us a lot so it's it's just we're having a lot of fun with it killer man and when you think back to the movie all these years later like do you have a favorite scene you know was it was it one that stuck out i mean uh, other than you know the Lori laughlin scenes right i know that that one's probably up on all the fans uh you know list but you know like i think back to the movie and i remember you know when they've got you know, you and the, and the stunt riders going up the logs, you know, as a kid, I always thought that was a cool one. I, I kind of know how they did it, but like, is there any one scene that stands out to you? Like, Hey, you know, that was my favorite scene. Uh, I really liked, I mean, a couple times, uh, I, I, I got an acting buzz working with Talia Shire when she confronts me in the, uh, in the qualifying and, and working with Jack Weston. These guys are, you know, and, and Talia are people I grew up watching mm-hmm. and Legendary. loving and and admiring. And all of a sudden, I'm on a movie set, and they're on they're in my movie, so to speak. Even though I was working for her, uh, so they're very professional actors, and that's why that movie doesn't suck after all these years. Is he, is Hal was very wise and putting very strong supporting players in there in those roles that could have been done by lesser actors, but not done nearly as effectively. So, um, actually what a lot of people don't know the scene where 
Talia confronts me, you know, I was started out as one in 10,000 and now I'm one in 20. That dialogue, dialogue is actually all dubbed. <clears throat> so uh, we recorded yeah. all the dialogue later. And if you look at it, you can't tell. It's, it's very well, spot I must on. say, that I, it's spot on. That's, that's the only job I'm really proud of is the dubbing <laughs> I did six <laughs> months later in an ADR, in an ADR studio because that, that took some doing. Well, it's kind of funny because I'm a big fan of the Goonies, and I was watching. It was a. It's really short. It was a making of the Goonies, and in that that famous photo of the the boys there with the map in front of them, that was like taking like six months after I think principal photography had wrapped, and I had never known that. And they took it, I think, at the Universal one of the lots there or something, you know. But it's amazing sometimes the things that you don't know that kind of go into making uh, a cult classic or a masterpiece or you know whatever type of movie. Uh, a lot of these, you know, including me, that we're into, you know. Yeah, a lot of movies have reshoots and go back two years later and and add more footage. So uh, I remember doing a photo shoot with Bart Connor, like the weekend movie that came out they had us back in the studio doing reshoots for the ads, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened to that photography. Yeah. And I seen on like, you know, following on eBay a lot, like sometimes the posters from overseas will come up and they're a little bit different and that stuff is always kind of intriguing. I know a lot of guys have collected that, including uh, the eighties garage guy that uh, I follow. He's got some pretty cool stuff, but you know, to your point, the stuff's pretty rare and it doesn't really come up often. The, at least the legit OG original stuff. But, um, you mentioned uh, Hal Needham, and you talked a little bit about him at the Hell Track event, which I appreciate. Um, you know, he directed uh, many films like Smoking the Bandit, Smoking the Bandit Two, uh, Cannonball Run, etc. But he also directed Rad, as the fans know. Now, you mentioned his book during that Hell Track event. Uh, can you share with us, um, you know, a little bit about how awesome Hal was as a person, as a stuntman, etc.? Well, for those who don't know. Uh he wrote a book about his career, a uh, Hollywood stuntman, uh, I believe is the name of it. And he was the highest paid and most acclaimed stuntman in Hollywood for probably a couple of decades before he ever started uh, directing films. He became Burt Reynolds stunt double, then best friend, then lived in his guest house. Mm-hmm. And he eventually got Burt to, to star in this movie that he, he actually came up with. But, uh, Hal was just a, a real man's man, a real Southern gentleman, but the toughest hombre you'll ever meet. He broke over something like 50 bones or something mm-hmm. like that dur- during his career. And if you look at his reel on YouTube or something like that, the stuff he did is truly unbelievable. So he was just a top drawer athlete, smoked five packs of cigarettes a day, wow. drank, scotch, drank scotch like it was going out of style, you know, closed down the bar every night, and he was <laughs> well into his 50s at this point, and just tough, tough as nails, but, man, just sweet, and, and uh, you know, you wouldn't be talking to me right now if it weren't for how I meet him. So, you know, I, 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 I got to spend some time with him uh, a couple of years before he died and I just treasure those moments because I just got to read his autobiography so I was able to grill him about that uh-huh. and uh, get, get the backstory on a lot of those chapters that uh, were most intriguing to me and uh, yeah uh, uh, what can I say he, he won an Oscar for building the shot maker this camera car and then he got a lifetime achievement Oscar just a couple of years before he died but he innovated so much, uh, like the, the airbag for stunt men to fall into. They used to fall into cardboard boxes and two by fours. And then the air ram that launches stunt men into the air. He innovate, he came up with that idea first. Um, wow. yeah, just so many things. He, he completely, uh, made over NASCAR and helped make it the sport that is, is now, which, I think he was definitely trying to do with Hell Track. In other words, in the original <clears throat> script, mm-hmm. uh, it was just a normal BMX race. And he's the one who came up with the Hell Track concept and really blowing it up and really making Hell Track. And that made the movie, if yep. you think about it. You try to imagine the movie without Hell Track. It's just you can't. So uh, he was he was trying to do 
with bikes what he did with NASCAR because he was NASCAR o- owner and he, he brought all this glitz to uh, NASCAR that it didn't have before. Before, it was just a bunch of good old boys right. screaming, <laughs> screaming around a track, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But he, he put them in the sharp dress. He put the pit crew in the sharp dress overalls and and, and brought out the cheerleaders and, and all this telemetry to the cars and really just ran a bit. So, so he does rad and, and has the same vision for bicycles. And, and it wasn't too long that here comes the Huck Jam, here comes the Do Tour, here comes X Games. I think he was really forward thinking in all of that and gets zero credit for that kind of, in that realm. Yeah, well, rest in peace. I think the word that sums it up is pioneer. Um, for anyone out there, you can just search uh, Hal Needham, H A L N E E D H A M with two E's there. He passed away at 82 out there in Los Angeles. But, you know, I can't say um, much bad about the guy, man. He lived an awesome life. And, uh, you know, rest in peace to the, to the legend. Now, I did want to hit on. You know, Brandon Lee was a close friend of yours, I think a roommate at one point. Um, Our listeners around my age will remember the movie The Crow. Uh, He was gone really far too soon, as as we all know. Um, This year, I think, marked the 26th, you know, anniversary of his untimely passing. But, you know, you being such a close friend of him and him being son of Bruce Lee, you you must have seen this talent with him. I mean, I just – it's so – disheartening that that he was gone at such a young age man well it's a, a very personal story to me i mean we we were actually best friends and and roommates and and uh we we founded a theater company t- together uh we, you know we we traveled around the country together we just switch and sundance that's all mm-hmm. i can say and and so i i really got to see him uh flourish as a martial artist and as an actor and, and most importantly, as a person and as a friend, uh, uh it, it was the last five years of his life that I, I got to really know him. And, uh, during that time, it, it was my heyday as an actor and, and we really got to support one another. And, and he, he was one of a, a very, strong talented group of people who were coming up at the same time and uh he just he just uh, left us way too soon so right now i'm involved in uh doing a documentary about brandon awesome. and we've been talking to a lot of uh his martial arts instructors and and uh partners including dan in asanto who um was bruce's protege and his dad's protege and uh yeah, I would expect that to be coming out next year, but but the people that have already sat down and have agreed to sit down is just it's it's jaw dropping. I mean, really great, talented, loving people are showing up uh just just to give their props to Brandon and uh the more I find out about him through people who work with him or train with him as a martial artist, the more I'm just bowled over. We lost so much uh in the movie world what he was about to do i mean he was just more capable than his dad yeah. now you chew on you chew on that for a while he was more capable of his uh, than his dad as a martial artist and certainly as an actor because that's what his focus was uh it's 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 it, you know again yeah, for me it, it's yeah it just gives me goosebumps man sorry it just it does well it does me also, and, and it, you know, we sat down at a cafe recently to to film more about this documentary, and just a couple blocks away from his old apartment in Funky Echo Park out here, <laughs> and and the three main posters I remember seeing in his Echo Park pad were of his dad, Bruce, James Dean, and Jim Morrison were the most mm-hmm. prominent. And th- these were the people that he paid attention to. Now we all know those guys flamed out at an early age. And because of that became beyond legends, yeah. you know, icons that, that, that will be around after the earth is burn up. Yes. <laughs> you know, the yeah. cockroaches will be talking <laughs> about these people. And so that, that was kind of his template 
to follow. And he really did follow all those guys in their intensity. And then 26 years later, here I am giving a film crew a tour of his apartment and the places we used to eat just like those guys. It's just like, Mm. bang, they did three movies and they were out of here. Or Jim Morrison, you know, became this icon was done at 27 and, and, and then Brandon achieved the same thing by the time he was 28 and now he's gone and, and he's, he's iconic, iconic in a way, in a, in a way that's untouchable, unchangeable and, uh, irrevocable you know he 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 did it well he did it and and i couldn't i couldn't agree more i think like when you look at the legacies of like the Marilyn monroe's and stuff and his you know his legacy and his story needs to be told and it's awesome to hear kind of what you're you're assisting with and kind of helping drive because when you look at you know like a marlon brando or just some of these iconic folks you know their their legacy lives on through merchandise and through stories and things like that, and it will just be great to hear you know some more of Brandon's story. So you know, I know again to your to your point, he was a best friend of yours, and I know you talk about it in the book. That's why I highly encourage everyone check out my rad career. He'll talk about some kind of the intimacies of life, including when you first heard about his untimely passing. So uh, thanks for sharing that, uh, Bill. So a little bit lighter topic. You talked about, uh, you know, playing in a band, the pipe fitters. Uh, when I was leaving the rad event, uh, you know, I had to drive overnight over to Biloxi, uh, that Thursday night, you guys were kind of just setting up and in the book, you have a photo with the pipe fitters. You guys have been playing a long time. I know that you also have a photo in here from live aid. So I know the pipe fitters is near and dear to your heart. Um, how, how do you, you know, how do you, um, you know, tell the story of you guys playing all these years now, man. Well, uh, just to correct you, it was uh, Farm Aid, not Oh, Farm Aid, sorry, Farm Aid. Being be, be from Texas. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, 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 so uh, it came to pass. Uh, I did a play with Brandon Lee, uh, strange, coincidentally, about a blues band. Okay. And the band and the band consisted of me, my brother, who was starring in the play, Christopher Lindsay, who's a Nashville songwriter now, and uh, a drummer. And the play folded. The band stayed together, and because we were all dear friends with Lou Diamond Phillips, he ended up joining the band because wow. he's Lou Diamond. He's Lou Diamond Phillips, yeah. you know. And so we we ended up touring around the country. In a tour bus, uh, probably we probably did six, eight tours and, and played hundreds of dates. And uh, at one point, ended up opening for Billy Ray Cyrus when he was doing stadiums. So there I am, a harmonica playing actor who hadn't even picked up an instrument really until like three years before, three, four wow. years before. And now I'm, I'm touring, you know, stadiums with Billy Ray Cyrus. Is like, how, how did this happen? <laughs> how does this happen? And yeah, we end up playing Farm Aid with Willie Nelson. And, you know, if you're from Texas, Willie is bigger than, than Jesus or Roger Staubach or anybody. Right. I mean, to, uh, he just, he changed everything. And I lived in Texas during the, the outlaw cowboy days, you know, him and him and Waylon in Austin. So it, his, his legend was was beyond by the time I got to work with him, you know, play his festival. Uh, and that was all because of Lou and, and, and his influence. But we actually had a really great band by the end of the, our run. And Christopher Lindsay, who I mentioned, our bass player, moved to Nashville because of our ties we formed there and has now worked with every major Nashville artist you can name, Taylor Swift, Tim McGraw, uh, Kenny Chesney, uh, he, you know, he's, he, he's sold something like 90 million records. So, uh, that's, and he's going to be a part of the, um, documentary also. He's coming out here in a week or so to sit down and talk about Brandon. So, uh, awesome. yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, man. Well, it's, it's cool to see you guys have had that friendship and just, you know, you love getting together and not all bands are like that. So, you know, obviously bands have ups and downs, but, uh, it's cool to see you guys have that tight friendship and whatnot. But, um, 
you know, when I think back to a lot of the stuff we talked about and, you know, I think, you know, rad 25, I didn't make it to that event. Uh, I was at the hell track 2018. Uh -huh. What's, what's next for rad fans? Cause you, because you know, Bill, they want more. We want more. Um, do you anticipate yeah. more stuff? I, I know they would need to become a part of the rad army, but, uh, any hints you could throw out there? Uh, well, uh, no, <laughs> yeah. actually, no. I knew that except was coming. Stay except, except stay tuned. Uh, that's all I can say is uh, I, I'm in it to win it and to be there for the fans, and you know that. Yep. I show up to these events, and I meet everybody and sign every body part, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's, it's a joy of my life. So uh, I, I, think, I think good things are coming for rad fans. Well, well, good stuff. And why don't you give a shout out? Um, I know your lady, right? She's a big supporter of everything. Uh, uh, and keep me honest here. She was at the rad event. I remember she, you know, she helped, I think probably a lot with the event, but, uh, you can't be an awesome dude like Bill Allen without an awesome, you know, significant other. Isn't that, isn't that right? It's true. Uh, my lovely wife, Carol Allen is just, uh, a godsend to me and we're working on new material for the book tonight we're doing some editing so it's going to be out in hardback on audiobook oh good next year next year with added material i'll probably throw a couple more pictures in there but you'll be able to get it on your kindle and on amazon and at barnes and noble so i'm I'm really excited. Uh, they can just found me online and uh, and decided they 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 want to work with me. So this is going to be uh, it's going to be a great thing. Excellent. And I would tell the listeners if you go to myradcareer.com, as Bill mentioned earlier, you'll see some of the color photos that he. If you happen to have that um, paperback copy, like I do here in front of me. Uh, of course, it's a black and white, but some of those color photos are on there with uh, Jack Weston, Alfie Weiss, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think that's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, Bill, we talked about a lot earlier in the podcast. You know, I kind of touched upon before we started uh, some of the things, like some of the questions that you probably get a lot. And I hit upon those. You answered a lot of those at the Hell Track event. So um, we did have a couple of our um, our our friends, if you will. They submitted questions like Scott Bunselmeyer was joking. He goes, hey, well, he signed the side of my trailer. He has a really cool enclosed trailer. And at truck shows, he plays the Rad DVD on the TV on the outside, dude. It looks pretty cool. So he was kind of jo joking about that. And then uh, Chris Wegman, he kind of said, hey, we need another movie. And I know that there were some talks and some stuff, but uh, I think you best summed it up. Like, stay tuned. You never know what's coming. Yep. Yep. Good yeah. stuff. Uh yeah, I'm I'm really excited for for what what could be in store for the Rad fans and and Crew Jones in particular. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been a fun ride and it's not over yet. Yeah. So to the '80s Garage and Devin and everyone out there, uh, if you if you found us and you enjoyed this, um, you know it's awesome that Bill sat down with us. Bill, is there anything else? You know, it's been an honor and a pleasure having you on. But to anything else you would want to share with the listeners or maybe some of the Rad fans? Well, I'm also working on an interview show. I'm a ultralight airplane pilot. I've got this little open air airplane called a powered parachute. So I'm starting an interview show wow. where I interview people from the back of it. You know, <laughs> completely. So yeah, wow. absolutely. So, That's cool. So uh, Sean Butler, uh, Goldie Butler, who's uh, pretty big in the BMX world, he sat. He went up with me for the first time, and uh, yeah. So I, I think that's going to be. Uh, coming up probably in the early part of next year we'll, we'll start putting those out talk about taking the karaoke and the cars you know show to the next level bill i love it dude yeah <laughs> you're always at the new heights <laughs> you had to do yeah. heights well again myradcareer.com uh we'll tag bill on instagram uh but if you type in bill allen uh it will pop up um and you know thanks again we will stay in touch with you and uh Dude, stay rad, man. I know it's cliche, but uh, stay rad, brother. Thanks, man. Good talking to you. <laughs> All right, man. We All got right. you, everyone. So there you have it, the interview with Mr. Bill Allen. Thanks again for all of your time. Also, during the interview, I mentioned the uh, laser disc, and uh, I was actually – what I was trying to say was the 80s garage on Instagram. If you take a look back at his posts, the homie – 
he has the only copy that I know that's signed. So that's what I was trying to say. And uh, to Bill's point, those laser discs, they do come up uh, for sale. And going back to my comment earlier, how it was never officially available for sale, uh, I should have been more specific. I think that was just like the VHS itself. But uh, for those that remember the laser disc players, by all means, that laser disc was available uh, for sale back in the day. And it's uh, one of those things where it's not super hard to find, but you know, generally speaking, there are anywhere from 100 to 200 dollars. You sometimes will see them sealed on eBay. And uh, the homie at the 80s garage, he of course has one. And his is signed by Lori Laughlin, and he even somehow got her to take a photo with uh, the the uh, number plate, I think it was. Uh, he posted back on October 24th, two of my most prized possessions in this rad BMX plate is this rad BMX plate and LP signed by Bill Allen and Lori Laughlin. Took me three years to get her to sign it, and um, yeah, so crazy stuff there, but there's no doubt Rad is a cult classic if you haven't ever watched it. Like I said, gave you guys uh, the couple of the means to get out there and buy it. I think the website I meant to say was Rad Dash, uh, so that you need to put a Dash DVD in there, but uh, not sure if that site's still going on or, or if it's still up, but you can always go on eBay. Again, it is the same guy. I kind of took a look at uh, the different website and you know compared it to the eBay listing, and it's, it's the same dude. So for about 10 bucks, you can get out there and you'll have a, a pretty good copy of it. But uh, the 80s Garage, if you even go back, uh, you'll see that he has a lot of cool stuff, including the Rad 33 anniversary poster, uh, of course, some different tribute bikes, and just a lot of cool stuff. So in general, we got to have the homie on at some point. But with that being said, you guys have heard me talk enough. If you're a new listener, thank you guys so much. And as I said earlier, enjoy the weekend. We out you.